In this video, we'll be exploring Velo and its functionality in relation to EditorX for building this pricing calculator I'm putting together. We're going to do a couple of things such as hiding and showing different elements with clickable events and lots more. So let's just get started right now. And this site is one that I've been working on for the last few videos. We've got a pretty good design going and now it's also responsive, but it isn't really well a clickable demo just yet so what i'm thinking is that we should make one that basically works with different sort of i suppose clickable events that takes you to different screens now if we open up the figma design we'll have a better idea of what i mean by that so we'll head over here to the design for the pricing calculator and here, what I've done is actually built out several screens with the very first one here being this step one that we have. Now, in order for this to work, we'll be using Velo. And what I'm thinking is that we could probably create a number of pages here that are kind of invisible until you have the clickable events. So when you click on this button over here, you'll land on the very first page, which is the pricing calculator page. Um, I'm thinking to even maybe replicate this design here that we have um, as maybe like a master um, section. Let's have a look here. I think it's just over here, masters. Let's see if we can turn this into a master. So I'm gonna right click here. I'm going to select to so set this as a master section. Uh, I want to rename this uh, section over here, but uh, it is showing up. Uh, and if we click edit, we can see it immediately here. Now, what this means, though, is I should be able to maybe duplicate it. Yep, here is our duplicate. And this one here I want to change. So let's actually have a look at it. It actually has the header here. I probably need to move this outside of its current section. Uh, so let me first remove this one over here. It will be deleted. Uh, then let's create a new header. Actually, you know what? No, no, we might even be able to keep the header because we can see the second page here doesn't have that same header. It's completely different. So actually, let's go back. We'll duplicate this one. Uh, this one will exist here below. So I want to sort of make sure it's right here below, which it is. We can do a preview of the page. We can see both of them here back to back. But what's going to happen is we're going to make one of them invisible until we make a clickable event. So this one here, I'm going to delete a couple of these things. Uh, I'm going to probably have a different description here. And I'm also going to do a couple of other things. But for the time being, let's open up our dev mode. And it will occur when we see this code on the left hand side. So that has appeared. Now for this section here below, I want it to not be displayed. So we just have the main section here. And we're going to display it only when, for example, we click an item. Uh, so let's actually have a look at creating that function. So the first thing we've got here is we've got our very first item here, box nine. And I want to create an event here for this box nine. Now uh, here, I'm going to select start editing the code here at the very bottom. And I want to head over to the master page.js section. What we're going to do is we're going to select our box nine here and you'll be able to see on the bottom right hand side, there are a number of little options here that we can do. I want to create a different ID. First of all, we're going to call this maybe um, website. Oh, let's keep it simple. Home hourly pricing. There we go. So that's a nice clear name. You'll notice I've got the uppercase. That's to show when a new word is coming through. And I do that normally in the same way with JavaScript. So this is where we can start doing different types of events. I want to create an on click handler. So I'm going to create one by selecting the on click here, selecting en enter. And it's already created the function for me just over here. So this is the function that'll run when we do an on click. What's interesting here is that this event here, we can now structure however, however we want. So the next thing I want to happen 
is this entire div here, which currently is called section one. I'm gonna call maybe um, home one. Uh, I'm gonna make this entire div disappear. I'm gonna do this by going to this function called home hourly pricing click. We're gonna do a W, which is going to reference the editor and it's all its little commands. And we're gonna reference the home section, home one. Well, this is this main section that we have. And what I wanna do is I wanna make it hidden. The reason I wanna do this is because I want the other section, which we're gonna probably call maybe hourly pricing. Let's do that now, hourly pricing. We're gonna make this visible in comparison. So I'm gonna do W and we'll go hourly pricing. Here we go. We're gonna make that visible. Or maybe this has to be show actually. Yeah, show, we'll do show. And this one we'll do hide maybe even. I think it might be hide. Yep. Cause hidden will be like a Boolean that gets returned whether it's visible or not. Whereas hide will actually make it hide. Now this is a pretty simple on-click handler. And this should work. And I think the only other thing we need to do here is just make sure this item here looks clickable. Um, I think with this JavaScript, it might already be, but let's actually give it a test. So I'm going to click publish over here. And we're going to call this pricing, uh, click save and continue. And let's see how well this works. So this is just loading up right now. And it's published. Let's view the site. So here we have the two, I'm going to click this and the first one disappeared while the second one is still visible. Of course, the second one should ideally be invisible. So this is where we can start playing around a little bit more. So this second section here that we previously had, I'm going to select it to do not display. Let's publish this once more and give it another test. Uh, one thing I'd love to be able to do is just to do a preview and see if that does it. All right, I think it does. Um, now it's definitely made my section disappear, but as to the second section here that I've had, which I've manually made disappear inside of the layers, it's not exactly appearing once more. So this is where we can start doing other things like on the on ready handler, we can make sure that the home one section and the hourly section are preemptively hidden or displayed depending on what state they need to be in. So in this case, I'm going to make this section here for hourly pricing hidden. And I'm going to select a preview on that. Let's give that a shot. Great. So this section here, you can see below is hidden, whereas this section here is visible. We'll select to do a click event. And we can see now the bottom section is visible while the top isn't. However, we kind of want the entire section to also lose its scroll ability because we can see that we don't want to scroll down to see the next section. We just want it to appear. Now, I think I know the reason for this. And this is because the current instances of show and hide, they're probably updating a variable in CSS called visibility. Visibility hidden and visibility visible basically imply that the content is always there. We just can't see it. There is another type of variable called display, which is display block or display flex or display none, which literally collapses all the content if it, for example, is set to none. And we can probably identify and change the figures here that we have of hide to maybe something like collapse. And this should do that for us. So here where we've got hide, I'm going to also update that to collapse. And the alternative to that where we want to show it will most likely be expand. Now with these new figures, let's actually save that, do a preview and see how that works. So here we've got our only item, which is our website calculator visible. If we select the first option here, we've seen our title disappear, which means we've expanded out the next page of this. So we've successfully done it. And this is exactly what I was after. The only other thing here that we probably need to do is this on ready handler. It's kind of a little bit slow here. I'm going to see if it's any faster if I take this collapse outside of that function, because I noticed that we could scroll a little bit when we originally loaded the page, but possibly we might need that. Yes. So that'll definitely need to kind of exist here 
in this section. But now that I know this command, I want to see if, for example, if we set do not display, if that'll actually fix up the problem we're having. So let's give that a shot. And no, no, that's not the exact item that I'm looking for. But I think I'll figure that out sooner or later. Now with this done, we can probably figure out the elements that we want here for this next section. So let's actually close these out, which was my little research into finding out how hide versus collapse works. Let's jump on to this next section, which we currently have hidden here in our masters, make it visible once more, and let's update this. So here, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to update our options here that we have from 10 to 20 hours five to 10 hours, two to four hours. And I think we only have the three main options. Yeah, that's correct. And the other one I can probably delete here. We have a little bit more of a description. So I might actually move to make that visible. Uh, let me copy paste this element. I'm not sure where it's going. And here, as you can probably see I'm just filling out the content similar to the design we had earlier so that we know exactly what's happening. Uh, so I think this box here, this needs to be white. So let me just update that now. Uh, we also need a little bit of a title here. So let me see if I can pull that across. I'm just going to reuse some of these elements we previously had. Here's me troubleshooting a little bit just to move all the elements into place. And this makes it a lot more easy to tell this is a completely different section now. So now when we do a preview, we have this main section here for the website calculator. We select hourly pricing calculator and we get moved to this next step here where it is essentially you deciding what your skill level is. Now, uh, there's probably still a few things I need to do here in terms of styling and editing. So I need to update this section here to have that nice little circle, as well as some of these, uh, I suppose, positions of items being in the same as the previous ones. So a lot of this right now is being docked. Let's make sure it's docked the same way. Percentage, percentage. Uh, let's do a little circle here that we had at the top. Uh, let's see, we should be able to just jump on to the layout tool. I think I'm going to select the circle over here and just drag and drop this into place. Just making sure that it's in the right position here. Uh, now I think in the design we had like a gray color with the number one here. Uh, it's more like a blue tint but I should be able to easily design that just over here. Let's add the hex value. Uh, beautiful. And then I'll just copy paste a number into there. Now with that done, uh, I think this section should be good. I'd love to give it a quick test once more. Uh, let's move this here. Number one, beautiful, but that's looking quite good there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is also possibly resize it. Uh, I've got a feeling that it's not going to resize well, but I'm sure I can play around with fixing that up a little bit later. Okay, um, so here, uh, this is currently set, I think, as a pixel amount. Yep, so I'm going to set the docking of this one over here also as a pixel amount. And let's click preview. So we'll start off, we've just got the website calculator here, we're going to hover over hourly pricing, and we've got our skill level here, and our hourly pricing options. So perfect, uh, that seems to be working quite well. The rest of it will just be an extrapolation of that aspect, essentially creating the on-click handlers to take us to the different pages. So I'm going to do this in the background because it's going to be quite uh, time intensive, but this is more or less how you would create clickable events like this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next one, I want to have a look at how we can store some state inside of Velo. So when we transition from one screen to another, we'll be able to do some real pricing calculations. Now, if you guys want to be part of this project, if you want to help, join the Discord below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.